Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Bose. I'm a research specialist with North Dakota State University Extension Entomology. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about using smartphones for GPS navigation while you're scouting in the field this summer. Just some basic background about GPS. GPS is an abbreviation for Global Positioning System. If you take a look at the, the center white image, you'll see the planet Earth, and there's a number of orbiting satellites around the planet. Those satellites are in six different orbital planes, and each satellite orbits the Earth twice each day. And right now, there's a total of 31 operational GPS satellites. So that arrangement, what that means is that anywhere you are on the surface of the Earth, you can get information from four different GPS satellites. And that is the bare minimum required to provide you with a fixed location on the surface of the Earth. In the upper right hand corner, I have an uh, illustration of a GPS, handheld GPS device. Handheld GPS devices only get information from the satellites, but they're quite accurate. That GPS handheld device will be about 15 to 20 feet in accuracy. And what, I'm, what I mean there is that if I fix uh, coordinates using my handheld GPS device, I come back in a few days, I'll be 15 to 20 feet away from where I was when I set those coordinates. The bottom right is a special application of GPS technology. This is a, it illustrates the RTK system. So what we have here is we have a tractor that has a GPS receiver on it. And that tractor GPS receiver is getting information from the GPS satellites. Also, there is another GPS receiver that's fixed to a stationary tower, and that tower is also getting that information from those same satellites. And then the receiver on the tractor and the receiver on the tower can communicate with each other to correct any discrepancies between the two points. And the result of that is accuracy down to within one inch. It's really amazing technology. The more satellites that you get, the better uh, fix or the better accuracy of your position will be. Now I'll be talking mostly about using a smartphone for the GPS navigation. A smartphone is kind of a almost a little compromise between just a handheld GPS or these more sophisticated RTK systems. Our cell phones now have built-in GPS chips, receiver chips, plus the cell phones can communicate with cell phone towers and we know those positions are fixed as well. So it's kind of a compromise. We can get the information from the GPS satellites and provide even better accuracy by triangulating with cell phone towers. So when I'm talking about positions on the earth, what I am talking about is latitude and longitude. This is the coordinate system that we use. La lines of latitude and longitude are basically imaginary lines that circumscribe the Earth. Now, the Earth is very nearly a perfect sphere, it means the surface of the Earth is curved. And we need to put some lines on there. So the first one I'll discuss here is the equator. This is a special line of latitude. The equator is set at zero degrees latitude and it circumscribes the earth at its widest point perpendicular to the rotational axis of the earth. And that divides the earth into two hemispheres, north and south. Longitude lines are a little different. Longitude lines intersect the north and the south pole doesn't matter what the longitude is, whereas latitude lines always run parallel to one another. So lines of longitude run parallel to the rotational axis of the Earth and perpendicular to lines of latitude, again, through the poles. So we have to pick one of those lines and fix it at zero degrees longitude. That line is called the prime meridian and it runs from the North Pole, it runs down through Greenwich, England. That's where Greenwich mean time comes from is 
Uh, the time zones affixed to the prime meridian, and it continues down through Europe, Africa, through the southern Atlantic Ocean, down to the South Pole, then back around the Earth, through the Pacific Ocean, through the Aleutians, back to the North Pole. East of the prime meridian is the Eastern Hemisphere. West of the prime meridian is the Western Hemisphere. We use a system called decimal degrees for latitude and longitude. Note that in this system, the letter H precedes the decimal degrees and that denotes the hemisphere that we're in. So using this system, the north hemisphere for latitude receives a positive sign or no sign at all. We don't really need to put the positive sign in. Latitude in the southern hemisphere is preceded by a minus sign. For longitude, longitude in the eastern hemisphere is the positive sign or no sign, and longitude in the western hemisphere is preceded by a minus sign. So I'll use the coordinates for the Fargo Dome here in Fargo, North Dakota, as an example. Those coordinates are 46. 0.90241 degrees latitude minus 96.801624 degrees longitude. Now be sure that you record the minus sign for longitude in the Western Hemisphere. The reason is, is because our mapping software uses this decimal degree system and we need to have that minus sign in there. If I didn't, if I had 46 degrees and just 96 degrees longitude, the latitude would be correct, but the point on the globe would be 180 degrees around the earth. And I would actually be in uh, a, a desert near the Altai Mountains in Mongolia. That's, that's, but that's not where I wanna be. I wanna be here in North Dakota. So make sure that you use the minus sign. Okay, there's a, a few other systems of recording latitude and longitude, and this is all based on the premise that within a circle, there are 360 degrees. Within each one of those degrees, there are 60 evenly spaced minutes, and within each minute, there are 60 evenly spaced seconds. So one of the systems that you're probably familiar with is called degrees, minutes, seconds, where the latitude and longitude are expressed in terms of degrees, minutes, and then seconds. So using, again, the example of the Fargo Dome, the Fargo Dome would be located at 46 degrees, 54 minutes, and 11 seconds north latitude, 96 degrees, 48 minutes, and 6 seconds west longitude. The second system is called degrees and decimal minutes. And here we've taken the seconds and converted them to a decimal. Nobody really ever uses this system. Uh, but to continue with our example, the coordinates for the Fargo Dome would be 46 degrees, 54.177 minutes, 96 degrees, 48.098 minutes west longitude. Decimal degrees is the one that we want to use. Uh, the reason for this, again, is because the mapping software is like, uh, like ArcGIS or Google Maps, which I'll show you here in a little bit, use that format. It's very easy to enter those values into individual columns within a, a data spreadsheet. You don't need separate columns for degrees, for minutes, for seconds. And you have the plus and minus signs. So note that within decimal degrees, the abbreviations for north and west disappear. Those are replaced by the plus or the minus signs. Okay, now I do carry a handheld GPS unit as a backup in addition to uh, my smartphone, which I, I use mainly. Um, if you are carrying and using a handheld GPS device, they're, they're all different. I've got a couple of them pictured here. One is the Garmin E-Trex. And uh, there's also a Garmin Nuvi. I like that one quite a bit for navigation. Somewhere in those settings, you're going to look for the format for latitude and longitude and change it to decimal degrees. And you'll need to consult your owner's manual to do that.
So what you'll find, I think, is that using the smartphone in combination with Google Maps is much less cumbersome than using these older handheld devices. Okay, so again, our smartphones, they all have uh, built-in GPS receiver chips. We have cellular data through our cellular provider. So to use Google Maps, number one, make sure that Google Maps, the app is downloaded to your phone. It's a free app available on either the Android or the Apple, the iOS platforms. And most importantly, after that, make sure that your location services are enabled so that Google Maps can use that GPS chip that's in your phone. Okay. I'll talk a little bit about safety at the end of the, the uh, presentation here today, but open Google Maps and use Google Maps only when you are somewhere parked safely and you are not driving down the road and you are not presenting a road hazard. Okay, so here I've done that. I have uh, pulled over to a, a point near where I live in Minnesota. This is one of my bird watching spots actually. And I've drawn a red circle on the screenshot here just to draw your attention to the small blue circle in the middle of that red circle. So when I pulled over and I opened up Google Maps, this is what appeared. And that blue circle is going to be kind of pulsing. And that shows my present position. Now, if I want to save that place or add notes or photos, I will need to sign into my Google account to do that. But if I just want the coordinates to write them down onto a, a sheet of paper, say I've got a, a spreadsheet that I take with me in the field that I need to fill out while I'm scouting, I, I don't need to have that Google account. But if I am saving places and I wanna navigate back to them later, then I do need to have my Google account and I do need to be signed in. Okay, so here I am, I'm pulled over on the side of the road. The blue circle is blinking. Now I want to get the information for that point. So what I do is I touch my finger on that blue point and I hold it there for about one Mississippi. That's called a long press. When I do that, a little red pin mark will pop up. At the same time, a menu bar down at the bottom of the screen will appear. And what I can do is take my finger, touch that menu bar and slide it up. That exposes the information that's associated with that point that I've just created. Note that the latitude and longitude in decimal degree system is presented. I've got that circled in red right there. Now, again, if that's all I need, I'm done. I can just transcribe those coordinates very carefully onto my uh, spreadsheet or, or my data form on my clipboard. But if I want to create a label for that point and save it and add some notes, again, I'll need to be signed into that Google account. And I'll show you how to do that right here. So I'm at this point and I wanna create a label for it. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna add some notes because I want to navigate back to this point at a later time. If you're scouting, you probably will have hundreds of fields. You may want to come back to a specific field or you can carry your phone with you while you're scouting an individual field. Let's say you're scouting in a, a W or an X pattern and you, or in a soybean field, you come across one spot where there's a whole bunch of soybean aphids and you want to come back to that spot at a later date. You can save that exact spot using Google Maps. So you can come back to it later and see what's happening with those soybean aphids, for instance. So I click save or create a label. The screen on the left pops up, my keyboard pops up. I can enter a title for this point. In this case, I'm calling this Spring Prairie. And then I wanna save it. When I go to save it, a new list will pop up and I can save it to existing folders like my favorites or note that I can also create a new list. So let's say I've got 
soybean fields that I'm scouting. I can create a new list called soybean fields and I can save this point in that list. Notice also that another little box pops up. It says, add a note about this place. So I can add a short descriptor. In this case, I had found a short-eared owl when I was out birding. So I'm calling this the short-eared owl spot. When I'm done with that, all I do is click done on the screen and my saved button turns red, has a little icon with a heart in there. It's saved in my favorites. There's a description of that spot. Now let's say I wanna come back to that next week. All I do is find that in my favorites. I hit directions and this new screen pops up that shows a map. It shows my current position and a route to get back to that spot. Then all I have to do is hit start to begin the navigation. The, the voice assistant will tell me where I need to go, where I need to turn and how to get to that spot. That's pretty slick. Now here's something that's really cool too. Let's say I have 10 different fields that I wanna scout this week. I can use my phone, I can use Google Maps, I can go and create points for each of those fields sitting at my desk. I can save them into that folder and then when I'm ready to go to those fields, all I have to do is pull them up in the folder that I've saved it in in Google Maps, hit directions and hit start. So it's a great time saver in planning those fields that you wanna scout and getting to those fields. So you don't have to uh, spend a lot of time looking at maps and figuring out how you're gonna get there. All right, lastly, I said I would admonish you about safety. Absolutely safety first. I think we've all seen examples of some pretty bad driving where drivers are distracted, they're texting or emailing or trying to navigate. Uh, looking at their phones and not looking at the road. So hands-free smartphone use only. When you must interact with Google Maps by physically entering coordinates, be sure that you pull over and park in a safe place so that you are not a road hazard. Then go ahead and enter information into your phone. This is a regional presentation. State laws are going to differ, but understand and follow your state laws regarding device use in vehicles so that we don't have any accidents. That's they're completely avoidable. If you have any questions about the information that I've presented here today, feel free to contact me by email at patrick.bose at ndsu.edu. Thank you very much and good luck scouting this season.